Hello, my name is Connor Cook, and I'll be working with Green River. Behind me is the Eastcraft King Air 65 89 It's a twin turboprop aircraft. Today I'll be describing for you the anti icing and de icing systems this aircraft is equipped with so that you may have a better understanding of why we need these systems and how they help protect the aircraft against the icing environment. The de icing system in the King Air starts when bleed air from the engine is comes in through the valve and then goes straight to the check valve. The check valve is what allows air to flow in only one direction, so that way the flow of air does not reverse direction and come back out through the engine. After it comes from the check valve, it goes straight to the flow regulator. The flow regulator is what allows uh, which controls the flow of air. It doesn't allow too much air into the system itself. From there, it depends on what is selected. Should the boot's intent be to be inflated, the boots will be inflated as air is passed through the system and goes straight from the vacuum ejector to the distributor valve. The distributor valve will then distribute the air to the different boots, and as it does that, the wing boots and all horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer will be inflated as the air is pressurized into them. Should the intent be that the boots are not inflated, the vacuum ejector is where it will all stop. The vacuum ejector will literally eject the air and uh, permit a vacuum to exist within the boots, thus keeping all boots deflated for the whole flight. The pressure will also go straight from there to the pneumatic pressure gauge. The pressure gauge will tell us how much air is in the system, so that way we know how pressurized the boots actually are. All right, on the actual aircraft, the first half of the bleed air. The bleed air is located approximately right here internally, so you can't see it. Also over here is where you'd have the check valve. Check valve is also not visible without removing the end components. If we go under the wing, a line goes from there to approximately right here where the rotating beacon is. And right there you have your vacuum ejector valve, the distributor valve, and the flow regulator valve all in one component pretty much together. And from there all the air pressurized or vacuum air go straight to all the boots. The de-icing system on the aircraft is one of the ice prevention systems on the beach craft. It consists of de-icing boots on the leading edge of these wings, like these wings and the tail plane surface. When a switch is thrown in the cockpit, pressurized air is, goes through small pockets in the leading edge here and expands them slightly, so that when ice builds up on the surface, it breaks a mold of ice that's accumulated. It's important to note that ice must actually be formed on the surface of the, the de-icing boot to be effective, otherwise it doesn't help prevent ice from forming in the first place. There's no, there's no de-icing boots on the surfaces right here because the prop blast exhaust from the engine extends about 18 feet behind the engine itself, and so that's enough to keep the, the, this part of the leading edge of the wing clear of all ice or other kinds of contaminants. To use the de-icing boots, you're going to focus on this single switch. The single switch consists of three modes, single, off, and manual. The switch is normally in the off position. To activate the boots, you flip it to the single mode. The single mode will cause the boots to deflate and inflate once, consisting of one cycle. In the manual mode, which is the down position, that's mostly used for the ground operations because that will inflate the boots and keep them inflated as long as the switch is in the manual mode. It's important to monitor the pneumatic pressure gauge right here. The pneumatic pressure gauge will tell you how much pressure is generated in the systems that we described earlier. It's important that you are in the green range at all times to ensure proper pressurization of the boots and thus proper de-icing. The pitot tube is heated by a 28 volt current powered by the DC system of the aircraft. To prevent the pitot tube from overheating, you want to, on the ground, leave it on for no more than one minute on the ground. And you can lightly touch it with your finger to verify that it is heating. This aircraft is electrothermally heated through the switches in the cockpit once are flipped into the on or up position. It then sends a current to a timer that is located about here and on, on the other side of the wing. This timer sends four intervals of 30 seconds of heat to prevent overheating to the de-ice or boots. The heat is transferred through wires through here that are sent to the right hand intake air, the right hand air intake, and also to the propeller where normally there would be a de-icer wire harness that would attach to the de-icer boot, but 
in this case the aircraft doesn't have it, but it would connect here to these two bolts to the boot. To activate the left hand pitot tube, you would flip the switch onto the up or on position. To activate the anti-ice propeller sw switch, it is located here in the up position and that would heat both engines, propeller engines. And then here is also the engine lip boot that is activated either for the left or right engine. And above here is the windshield anti-ice that is controlled for the pilot or co-pilot or at the same time that are on put into the, the, the on position. They are activated through two wires in the windshield and between sandwich in between the glass. This concludes the summary of the ice prevention systems on the King Air. Thanks for watching.